Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Create. Uh, we can get start our session, App Meets Security. I am uh, Christian Veer. I'm a dev evangelist here at uh, DevNet, um, and I focus on security. And we have some amazing talks here, but I want to remind everyone that uh, developers.cisco.com has amazing content, and we are developing a lot of content on security. So it's a great place to go learn. Uh, I know security has a little bit of inertia, where people think that, hey, um, I don't know anything about it. Um, I'm not probably very good in learning new things. Or there is an inertia or a hesitance against uh, developing on security. So we are making that easy. We want you to overcome that inertia. Security is very easy to understand. And Russ here, who is our first speaker, he is part of the Snort team. And uh, um, uh, he was part of Sourcefire, which got acquired by Cisco. So now it's part of Cisco. And he's, he's going to today talk about the new version of Snort. And, uh, um, and he's, he's, he's one of the uh, good, great engineers I know. So welcome, Russ. So go ahead. Thanks. Well, thank you. So I'm going to talk about Snort++, which is the next generation of Snort, uh, the next version, 3.0. Uh, we'll look at the overview and the underbelly. And by that, I mean we'll look at the high-level goals and the high-level design, as well as some of the details of configuring Snort++ and using Snort++ rules. Has anybody here actually used Snort? OK, that's cool. That's awesome. Has anybody used Snort++? Uh, not surprising. Hopefully, I can change your minds about that and get you to start playing with that. This is my evil doppelganger. Uh, he's been working on Snort for quite a while and working on Snort++ for the past three years, uh, give or take. So before we dive into the overview and the underbelly, let's start with a brief history of Snort to put things in perspective. Uh, Snort started out almost two decades ago, which is like ancient. Uh, it started out as a package sniffer. Uh, with the addition of rules or signatures, it became an IDS, an intrusion detection system, so it could alert on the contents of those packets. Uh, eventually, the rules supported a drop verdict so that you could place it in line and block uh, flows that were deemed to be evil. And uh, there's some important things to note about the origins of Snort. Uh, it, since it started out as a packet sniffer, it has provisional statefulness. Everything in Snort is a packet, and sometimes it's looking at wire packets, and sometimes it's looking at rebuilt PDUs, which have to be packets. Um, it predates commodity multi-core systems, and that means it doesn't scale particularly well, because you have to have multiple Snort processes running, and that means multiple configurations, et cetera, loaded into memory. Uh, so Marty Resch, the creator of Snort, back in about 2007, he created something called Snort SP, which is the Snort security platform. It was a framework. And I spent a good amount of time porting the version of Snort that we had at the time into this framework and then working on performance issues. And it was determined that uh, you know, we could bring the performance up to roughly on par with Snort, uh, but um, we couldn't make it go any further with what we had at the time. And then other priorities took over. There were some cool things that came out of that. That's where the DAC came from. If you know Snort, it has this thing called the DAC data acquisition interface. That's how it gets packets. It allows you to have different, uh, you know, one build that can get packets from PCAPs or AF packet or whatever without changing it. Um, and some performance tuning and so on. It also had Lua. But we had to continue on with the development of Snort. We took some of that stuff and put it in Snort. And then we uh, built out the IPS mode, which means that we could normalize packets, we could normalize streams and we could detect attacks sooner. Uh, we support an NGFW, so it can have things like application identification rules and so on. Uh, and then, of course, the file processing, so we can locate a file, uh, determine what the type is, calculate the signature, and then uh, actually capture the, the file if we want. So uh, roughly in 2013, I got another opportunity to work on the next generation of Snort, and that's when Snort++ uh, actually began. So uh, what is the plus plus thing all about? Well, it represents an increment of the base version, the major version, from 2.0 or 2.x to 3.0. Uh, it means that we're using C++, and it means that we're doing an incremental 
uh, iterative development to build it out. And um, it's a walking skeleton concept. Uh, we're working uh, smarter, not harder. You'll see that throughout the slides that come up. The overall goals are to improve both detection and uh, throughput at the same time. We also want to improve scalability and extensibility and a bunch of other things. And, and you'll see that as we go through. So starting with scalability, with Snort 2x, vanilla Snort, there is one packet thread and multiple control threads. With Snort++, we've turned that around. We have multiple packet threads and one control thread. And the significance of that is that all of the packet threads share the configuration. They share the fast pattern search engines. They share the network map, um, which is where we compile all the, the things we're learning about the network as we're processing. Uh, and that means that it scales better because it doesn't take as much memory, and there's more memory to use for state. Um, there's other follow-on effects. For example, if you have a 24-core system, you have, to, you have to run 24 vanilla snorts. And that means if you want to change your config and reload it, you have to reload it 24 times. With Snort++, you just reload the one config, so it's just one time, which obviously can be done more quickly. Uh, this diagram depicts the high-level design of Snort++. Uh, it's somewhat simplified, but roughly speaking, in the left, in yellow, there is a uh, well-worn path for the normal processing that we do with packets, things that we might do with every packet, like decode uh, the packet or defragment, desegment, um, all these things you see on the left. On the right, there's a pub-sub mechanism. And so we can have good performance on the left, and we can have good flexibility on the right. And the significance of this is that there's a lot of plugins in Snort++, and we want to be able to support you know, arbitrary collaboration. We don't know in advance what all of the threats will, how they will manifest, and so we can't pre-program a path you know, with all, the, all, with all the conditions to get to the point where we do specific processing. But what we can do is support that collaboration by allowing inspectors or whatever to generate inspection events and then having other plugins consume those. And the framework mediates or facilitates that communication, but it doesn't care what the, what the events are. And that allows us to add uh, considerable functionality in a very flexible way. Uh, another thing about that is that uh, we have what are called JIT buffer stuffers. This means that the, uh, the time didn't start. How much time do I have? Does anybody know? Oh, great. i got to move a lot faster. So uh, JIT buffer stuffers, that means that when we publish information, we publish access to it. We don't actually push the data. If someone wants a normalized buffer, they can ask for it, and the normalization will be done on demand. So we do it just in time instead of just in case. Uh, moving along, there's a plugin framework. So there's several types of plugins. Um, the codec for encoding and decoding packets, inspectors for things like HTTP, uh, the fast pattern search engine, and so on. Uh, the, the plugins have a very specific purpose. And to implement one, you, 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 you define an API struct that, that allows uh, the framework to instantiate a subclass of the base class for that uh, particular plugin. And you build out a mo you, you define a module which has things that glue it to the framework, like it defines the parameters, it defines peg counts, uh, provides access to performance metrics, and so on. Um, moving beyond packets, uh, Snort everything in vanilla Snort is a packet. If you rebuild an HTTP PDU, you carve it out of a stream. You've got to package that in an actual packet. It has all the layers, uh, the encapsulations. In Snort plus plus, we don't have to do that. A packet is basically an abstraction, a unit of work, and we can attach to that a wire packet, or we can attach to that an arbitrary buffer, and we can process that. Um, that allows us to do other types of things. For example, we can process files. Uh, instead of PCAPs, you, we can give it a PDF, and it will uh, you know, identify the file type and calculate a signature. Or you can connect two sockets. It'll, it'll bridge together two sockets, and you can process the payload. So there's all kinds of things we can do with that uh, flexibility. And um, I should highlight that there is a new and improved HTTP inspector. The uh, old one was uh, a source of pain for a very long time. Um, and it's fully stateful. So moving on to the underbelly. Uh, we'll start with the configuration. The configuration uses Lua JIT. 
this means that we have a consistent syntax and also we have a script that is executed when you load it. So the configuration isn't just some static thing that says what it is, it's actually a live thing that executes and can calculate values and so on, as this example shows. Um, Snort has some other uh, uh, goodies that go along with that. For example, it can output all semantic errors before it fails. Um, any configuration setting can be overridden on the command line. You can say dash dash lua whatever and set something. So you can run your conf one way and then change the config by adding or changing the command line option and run it again. Um, I'll get into the wizard next. There, since this is obviously not backwards compatible, there is a utility. We call it snort to lua and it will convert your 2.x conf into the 3.0 format. Here's an example. Uh, this is the vanilla Snort 2.x on the left in yellow and Snort++ in the green on the right. Um, some things you may notice uh, in, in Snort, um, you see that the first thing, the Stream 5 Global, is actually comma-separated options. And then you see that the HTTP inspect server is just space-separated. You see that Stream 5 TCP has a port list. There's only one port there, but it's a list. And it doesn't use curly braces, but HTTP does. So the syntax is all over the place. Um, that's all cleaned up because it's just Lua. Uh, and so this syntax on the right, it, the, if you see stream TCP, uh, for example, is saying instantiate the stream TCP module. And the open and close braces mean just use the built-in defaults. I don't want to change anything. Uh, the wizard is saying use default wizard. That's coming from snortdefaults.lua. So Simple scalar things like ints, enums, strings, whatever, are baked in. Things that are based on lists of tables and whatnot, like the wizard is, are uh, configured externally. And it makes it easy for you to copy and paste that and change it however you want. Um, and this at the bottom is showing a command line case where we're, where we're actually setting, uh, because we instantiate HTTP inspect, we can set HTTP inspect.decompress PDF uh, on the command line. Text rules. Um, the text rules, there's a long history with the text rules. We did not want to change that and lose that history. But in order to move forward, we had to make some concessions. We wanted a uniform syntax, for example. We also wanted to make all of the rule options plugins. So uh, we, uh, we, it is not backwards compatible. But again, Snort to Lua will convert your rules. If you understand Snort rules, you will understand Snort++ rules. They look very much the same, except they're a little bit simpler. I'll get into some of these details on the next slide, which has an example. Um, who tells, can someone tell me how much time I have? Oh, now it's working. Go, cool, I can see that. So uh, there is, uh, on top, we have a vanilla snort rule, and we have the same snort rule for snort plus plus on the bottom. You can see that in green, um, we formatted it nicely because it doesn't have to be on one line. It, we can have arbitrary white space. We don't need the, the, the new line escapes uh, if we want to do that for 2x. You can see that there's a uh, C style comment embedded in the rule. Um, we can also have the pound comments or pound begin, pound end, and, and, and remarks and so on. Uh, beyond the superficial stuff, the rule header says alert HTTP. Um, that is vastly simpler than what you have with the 2x rule. Uh, in this case, for the 2x rule, what really matters is HTTP ports. But here, we don't have to uh, explicitly say what all the ports are because we don't always know. Um, we can put in the, the ports if, we, if it's significant, but if we just want to get HTTP, we can say, okay, alert on HTTP. Looking at the rule body, HTTP URI is only there one time. Uh, Talos calls that feature a sticky buffer. Basically, we identify the buffer up front and use it until we change it later in the rule. In this case, there's just the one buffer in play. In the rule on top, there's actually HTTP URI four times, uh, one for each content, and then that capital U that's highlighted there in bold uh, for the PCRE. So, um, and also we don't have the, uh, the metadata service because that's implied by the alert HTTP. So the rule is simpler. We can actually go one better than that. And if we use Intel's hyperscan library, uh, there is a plugin that does the fast pattern detection using the hyperscan library. There's also a plugin that provides a regex rule option that you see here. And for this particular rule, all the contents in the PCRE were um, applied to the HTTP URI. And in this particular case, uh, we can make a regex. It's very much like PCRE, but not quite as, not quite as capable. Um, but it's very high performance. And we can identify exactly what we want with that regex. That's designated as a fast pattern. 
That means that if this rule, that if this fast pattern matches, there's virtually nothing to do. So this is a very high performance solution. Um, and we can, we're actually going to take it a step further and, and get rid of this flow as established uh, stuff there. So there will be nothing to do in this case. If the fast pattern hits, it's a match. All right, SO rules. Has anyone written or read an SO rule from Vanilla Snort? Uh, if you've ever seen one, um, you'll know what I'm talking about. They're pretty gnarly. Uh, in order to implement it, you have to write it in C structs. So it's a nested set of C structs that spell out all the options. There's all kinds of flags or together, and there's zeros and nulls all over the place, and who knows what it means. It's, it's, it's really hard to, to write one of those things. In Snort++, it's just the text rule. You can modify it in certain ways, and then you compile that in to make a header. You include that in your code, and away you go. So it's substantially simpler. SO rules, by the way, I'm, I'm moving quickly here. SO rules are used to uh, do things that you can't quite do with the existing rule syntax. Of course, with an SO rule, you can also define uh, your own uh, uh, rule options and extend the language. This is an example. You see some of the, the C structs there. That's by no means a complete rule. It's just the tip of the iceberg. On the right, you have the rule. Um, it's, it's got an uh, SOID that's used to define the stub. It's got this SO eval at the bottom. That means that I want to run this function called eval when I get to that point in the rule. And of course, you could have more of those. You could put them wherever you want, uh, and so on. So you can see that this is substantially simpler to uh, implement. OK, so there's just about a minute left. Um, this is by no means all there is to Snort++. I really only had time to touch on a few key things. Uh, on the left here in green, you can see there's a whole bunch of other stuff that it already does um, that's new and improved. Uh, on the right, you can see there are things that are coming up. Um, one of the things that it does now, it has a command line shell. So you can connect, say, via Telnet at, or a Unix socket. You can uh, uh, issue a command, say, to, to reload the config or to pause and resume the processing. Um, one of the things that's coming up is incremental reload. You'll be able to just reload a specific inspector, for example, instead of reloading the whole config. Uh, so you'll be able to do um, uh, more specific targeted things and have a more fluid uh, update. Finally, uh, if you're not already using Snort++, I uh, urge you to check it out. You can get it from Git. Uh, the master branch is always a valid uh, point. You can build from that and test it. Um, we're also on snort.org slash snort3, and there's blogs and emails, uh, email lists you can subscribe to. And that's it.